Hey, I'm RC and this is an introduction video about TypeScript. So in short, TypeScript, it's um, JavaScript, but with additional features that makes coding a lot easier. So TypeScript is the language I use in my MMORPG reigning chain. So all the server and all the client logic is written in TypeScript. So originally the game was in JavaScript, but as you will be able to see, it's very easy to convert a game in JavaScript into TypeScript. In order to get started with TypeScript, you will need three things. The first one is NPM, which comes with um, Node.js. I will put the link in the description. So once you have downloaded that, which is the package manager for Node.js, you'll want to install TypeScript with NPM install g TypeScript. Once TypeScript is installed, you will want to install a text editor that supports TypeScript. The one I personally recommend is Visual Studio Code. So before getting started about how to use TypeScript, I want to cover a little bit about what makes TypeScript different and so good compared to um, regular JavaScript. So the main difference between the two languages is that TypeScript has typing. And what I mean by typing is that you can um, specify the type of a variable, for example, a number, a boolean, a string, etc. So you can, for example, create a variable, call x and specify that it's zero and automatically um, TypeScript will know that x is a number. And if I create, let's say, a point x and y, it will automatically know that it's an object with an x and y property. So one of the big advantage with that is that um, the text editor will offer you auto-completion. So if I do pt dot, it will tell me, hey, do you want to write x or y? So the two properties of pt. So this is very convenient, especially when you have a, a large code base. And the other big advantage is that if you write something invalid, it will also tell you. It will tell you the property Z does not exist on PT. So normally in JavaScript, it's very hard to find bugs caused by typos because the only way to trigger the error or to, to know that the error exists if, if you call the function, try to execute it. So for example, if the function was called test, the only, know, the only way to know that there is a typo is if I or to call test. But with TypeScript, you will know at the compilation if there is a problem. You will know right away in the text editor. So TypeScript knows that those two tests are related. So if I add, let's say, a, not, a new parameter there and I'm trying to call it, it will tell me if there's an error, there's a mismatch. So I can go ahead and let's say put 12 and now it will work. If I try to call it with too many parameters, it will also warn me. Another very useful feature is that you can click go to definition and it will automatically jump where the function was declared. So obviously in that case, it's not very useful, but um, let's take for example, Rain Engine, which has um, hundreds of files. Um, I have this function, I don't know what it is. I press F12, it will jump me to the code. And then, oh, what is this? A change. I press F12, go there. What is skill? I can jump, oh, XP, level, okay, level zero. There we go. So another thing TypeScript helps a lot with is documentation. So let's say that this um, function has many um, properties. I can add documentation. I won't really go um, over how it works, but just want to let you know that this exists. So this is the documentation for this function. If I put my mouse up there, it will tell me this is a test. And for each of the parameters, it will tell me the description of them. So it's pretty convenient. So another cool thing is that you can easily rename variables. So I can rename symbol, call it my test, and automatically it will change all the, all the call to this function in all your code base. So not only this file, but all the files. And it's smart. If you have, let's say, a variable called my test, which um, just happens to have the same name than the function, the, the compiler is smart enough to know that it should not rename this, only this one and this one. So if I rename it to my test2, this one will not be impacted. And it also works with properties. So for example, I was console logging one over there. Um, when I put my mouse over there, it tells me there is a relationship between those two. So if I do rename this to xx, it will automatically change um, PT over there. So yeah, kind of related with renaming, there's also another feature called uh, find all references. And it will tell me uh, everywhere where XX is used. In that case, there's only two spots. So not that useful. But let's say here we have a new ability. 
I can do find all references and those are all the files that uses that um, property and then you can check and see by yourself the details and if I were to rename Knowability, it would change all those files. So with that being said, I guess you're eager to get started with um, TypeScript. So what you want to do is to create a new folder and add a .ts file in your folder, for example, lwell.ts. Um, and in that file, you want to write normal JavaScript, for example, this here over there. So all JavaScript files are also valid um, TypeScript files. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, TypeScript is JavaScript with additional features. So normally you want to take advantage of those additional features, but it's not necessary. So I could just write normal JavaScript and it will also work. So one thing to know is that browsers cannot run TS file directly. If I try to run that in Google Chrome, for example, it will simply not work. I need to convert it to a um, JS file. So in order to do the conversion, what you want to do is to open a um, command prompt, go inside your directory and type TSC and then the name of the file. Press enter and it will generate the equivalent in JavaScript. In our case, because this is um, normal JavaScript, the two files will be exactly the same. So if I open this over there, it will be pretty much the same thing. So yeah, right now you're probably thinking this is not very convenient. Um, I need to compile all the files individually, uh, but don't worry, there are quicker ways to do that. Uh, so what you want to do is to create in the folder, in the root folder, a tsconfig.json file. And inside that file, um, it should look something like this. So compiler option, just copy paste that code. Uh, what it means is that you want to compile everything in the folder except not modules and you will also convert it so it's runnable in MS Script 5 browsers. So this includes um, all browsers as well. So once this is done, what you can do is type um, tsc-w and automatically it will compile everything in your project. And it will also listen for changes. So if I make a change, for example, I call this with a tree automatically it's gonna recompile my JavaScript file and add three. So for example, for raining chain, at the beginning of the day, I type that once and then I'm ready to go and code everything I need. And normally the compilation is quite fast because it only recompiles the file that has changed. So even if I have 200 files and I modify one file, only that file will be recompiled. So even though we can simply write normal JavaScript and get um, a few nice features, there's still a limit to what it can do. So TypeScript can only give you um, advice and information about variable that has a known type. So for example, my test two, it knows that it's a function that has four parameters. PT, it knows that it's a, an object with a XX and a Y property, that X is a number, that console log does that. So it knows about those things. But for example, the variable A, the parameter A, TypeScript has no clue what A represents. So what are the possible values? So you will see um, it has any, the any type. And I can access whatever I want. So for example, AA. TypeScript is not able to tell me that this is an error because he has no information about whether this is valid or not. So what you can do is that you can specify what are the type of that variable. For example, A is supposed to be a number. And in that case, if I say A is a number, so it's um, colon and then the type, for example, number, it could be Boolean, it could be string. And I try to access the, the A property of the variable A, I should probably pick a better example, my property. Um, it will be able to tell me it does not exist because it's on the type string. If you want, you can specify that it has a any type. This is by default, all the variables are any type. So I could say A is any, so it will not do any checking. But if you precise that it's a string, it will do it's invalid. And it will also tell you, for example, in that um, function call, A is supposed to be a string, so zero is not a string. So I need to change it and now it's going to work. So we can precise the typing of a parameter with the um, colon string, but we can also do that for normal variables. So I could add um, x is a number. 
Um, sometime in JavaScript, you want to change the typing to something else. For example, I want to do um, x equal one, and eventually I want to do x equal a string. So TypeScript by default, it will tell you that it's not possible. So in order to bypass those, you can specify that x as the type any. And in that case, TypeScript will not do any validation and you will be able to do um, tricks. So I guess that will be pretty much it for this first video. So there's still a lot more to cover with TypeScript. So what I'm planning to cover in the next video is um, classes. So how to do object oriented in TypeScript. I'm also planning to cover um, how to have a multiple file um, structure and how to run it in both Node.js and on the browser. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.